Hey everybody, we are back and we are cooking a dish in the ninja. Yeah. All right, in case you missed it, we do have a video breaking down the ninja and how it works and what it is and why it's one of my favorite kitchen gadgets. However, this dish, if you do not have a ninja, you are completely capable of doing it with other things and I'll discuss that later, but you can use things like an instant pot you can use a slow cooker, you're gonna get different results, or you could do a stove top. So, we got some coconut oil. I have this on a sear and saute mode. Got some coconut oil and some butter. We're gonna to toss that in there. Now, you're gonna find this recipe on carrybrown.com, and it will say Filipino style chicken adobo. But if you look at the notes, you'll see that you can do it with pork as well and we are doing it with pork today. So what I have here is pork butt. Because everybody likes some pork butt. And I got cut into little small bite-sized squares. We're going on sear and saute mode. I'm just gonna kinda get the butter and everything around here. These things can get pretty hot. You don't wanna put a lot of it in there, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna lightly sear up the pieces of the pork butt to give it some texture. Now, I lived in the Philippines for about two and a half years and I was exposed to a lot of Filipino food. One of the things I know better to do is to claim that my food is authentic. This is a keto version of a dish that I love and that is Filipino style adobo and almost every Spanish conquest country you find you find some sort of adobo it's a very common food and the Filipino style adobo is very unique there's actually some different ones but the one that I like is probably one of the most common ones that you find and it is a, a very vinegary soy flavored um, dish and it is just phenomenal it's wonderful I absolutely love it normally they would serve it on rice but of course if we're keto we're not eating the rice so I'm just gonna flip these guys over real quick we're getting a, we're getting a really nice little browning sear on the pork and I want to make sure that I don't cook it all the way through. I just want that light browning. So, since we don't eat rice, there's other things you can serve it on. We do have a video on four ways to make cauliflower rice, so you can check that out. We, you could also get some stuff like this. This is uh, shirataki uh, konjac rice, miracle rice. Miracle rice is a good brand. They don't add a bunch of extra stuff inside their... Uh, inside their rice. Sometimes you'll find like tapioca flour and things that won't make it really keto. It'll be grain free but it won't be keto. So watch the ingredients but it's a really good alternative. It, it, some people don't like the smell when they open it up. The water that's in there has somewhat of a fishy smell to it but that's easily fixed if you drain the water off and rinse the rice really well and dry it a little out a little bit before you use it. So See, we got a nice browning going. I'm going to toss this in here. Now, the function that I'm doing right now, the sear saute mode, you can do this with an Instapot. You do instant pot. You do not have to use a Ninja if you do not have one or do not want to buy it. There's, there's a bunch of different versions of this type of working device. You could use these other versions, or you could even go stovetop stove top if you don't want to uh, if if you don't want to invest in actually a device. Using a Dutch oven or a large pot will work just fine. And all you're going to have to do is, if you're using an instant pot, you can do basically the same thing that I'm doing here on the same settings. If you're using a slow cooker, you might want to actually sear up the meat on the stove first and then transfer it to a slow cooker like a crock pot that doesn't have a sear mode. If you're doing it on the stove, you just put a cup pot on the stove, sear everything up, make it right in the pot, and you're good to go. So there's a bunch of different ways you can actually make this. Let's stir this up real quick. 
Now, typically, whether you're in Philippines or this dish is actually really popular in Hawaii, um, it's a very watery sauce. Uh, very liquid, very light. When I was in the truck, I wanted to make it more stick to your ribs and satiating. I also wanted less saucy type material consistency because it typically made a larger mess in the truck. So I wanted to thicken it up and tighten it up a little bit. So what I did was I modified by adding some konjac flour to thicken things up. And what that did also is it allowed me to keep more fat without getting an oil slick on top of the, of, of the, uh, the sauce and help keep the sauce consistency together. So this one's good to go. I'm going to put this in here. Now if you're switching, if you look on there and it's chicken adobo and you're switching from chicken to pork, use the same ratio of, of meat. It'll work just fine. And make sure you get the sear. And the sear is just for texture. If you did not want to get the sear going, you can cook it without the sear, but you're going to get more of a fall apart or pulled chicken, pulled pork kind of texture. Which if that's what you want, that's totally cool, but you're going to get much more chew and interesting texture if you give it a little sear first. And I set this out of the way. So, one of the next things that you do is you're going to add some garlic. I got some fresh garlic cloves right here. Uh, usually I find the larger garlic cloves to use and then when I, that way I only have to use one. On this situation the garlic was a little smaller so I used, I used a bit more. Whenever I would eat this in the Philippines they would just basically smash the garlic and then throw the whole thing in there with the, the the, the paper and everything and then just let it flavor and then you would pick the garlic out as you ate it. I like to peel the skin off because I actually like to eat the garlic. So I'm just going to smash it so that I can easily get the paper off. I'm going to use this little cup right here to put the paper in so I can keep all my trash together. So we're just going to smash. Now you can take the big like chef's knife with a wide space you're going to place your palm over it and you're going to press down and you're going to smash. That makes the paper really easy to get off. As you can see, it just peels right off now. And you've got a smashed piece of garlic. Okay. Just be careful when you're doing it. If you find that your cutting board is sliding around a little bit, you might want to put a damp towel underneath to keep it in place. But we have our garlic. So let me turn these guys over a little bit. We're about done with this one. What I like about doing this type of stuff is it's a one pot meal basically. If I didn't want to add the things like rice to it or put it on top of anything, I could just have a bowl of this and be completely happy. And I don't have to add a bunch of stuff. So let me turn this around real quick. I'm going to turn it off for right now. So the next thing we want to do is we're going to add, this thing is still hot, so I don't want to add anything to it right away. I'm going to let it cool down a little bit. It, because of how thin the pot is, it will cool down rather quickly, but I can hear the oil and everything bubbling. But this is a very liquid dish, and it's a very simple ingredient dish. And as you see when I pull the ingredients out, there's really not a whole lot in here. If you wanted to kick up the spice, you could add something like a little chili pepper or something like that in there. But generally, this is how you would have it. I actually added a bit of ginger just for extra flavor because uh, one of the people that I knew in the Philippines always threw ginger in her, uh, in her adobo, and she had like my favorite adobo. So I've got some bone broth, some chicken bone broth. We're going to throw that bad boy in. I got some vinegar. Now I have some rice wine vinegar with some apple cider vinegar here. But 
if you want to, you could actually use coconut vinegar, which makes an excellent flavor to it. It is a very different flavor. You could use that in there, and it's a. Uh, it also has a different mineral content um, in there. I just couldn't find any at this point, so I have that the rice wine and the apple cider vinegar. I have some coconut aminos. Typically, this would be soy sauce, but I have coconut aminos instead because I try to avoid soy products. Now, I have some sweetener. The recipe calls for brown mancanto, but if you cannot find it, I completely understand. I couldn't find it in a lot of stores I was looking for. So what I have right here is just some regular sweetener, and I'm going to throw that in there. You don't need a lot. It's just a bit of sweetness that you're adding to this dish. And we're going to stir up, get all this sauce incorporated. I'm going to go ahead and throw some garlic in there, and I have some ginger. Now I cut the ginger into the large enough pieces that I can find it when it's in the pot so I don't have to like, you know, sift it out. So that's going to go in there. The next thing I'm going to add is my konjac flour. Now I'm going to sprinkle this konjac flour in very lightly while mixing in because I don't want it to clump. If you clump the powder, you're going to get like these little mushy, I don't know, they're uh, lumps. Lumps. Yeah, basically lumps. We don't want lumps. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. We have cats off screen too, as well as carries. Cats and carries. Always a winner. <laughs> All right. So, a little bit of konjac flour in there. I am going to add some black pepper. You could actually, what they would usually do in the Philippines was actually just drop in a few whole pepper balls, but I hate trying to find them. And we're going to throw in some, the rest of our pork. Now, there's an option too, if you want, you could add a bay leaf in here. Um, that's okay if you want to do it. I didn't really find bay leaves a lot when I was traveling, but I do occasionally add them in here, but I don't always. So I find it, it, it adds a little bit to the flavor, but not a whole lot. I'm going to stir this up, so I want to try to get all the, the pork covered in the sauce. And with the Ninja, you have a separate lid, which I will go, I went over in the video. But this is the air fry bake lid, and then this is the steamer lid, and the pressure cooker lid, I mean. So what you want to do, you have this vent right back here. You want to turn it to open. We're going to put this on here. Right there. And we are going to set this guy to cook. Turn the power on. We're going to pressure cook this so that the process will be higher and I'm going to pressure cook it or process will be faster. I'm going to pressure cook it on high for about 45 minutes right there and hit start. So the, with the vent fan open, it's actually going to allow some of the steam to escape so that the sauce kind of concentrates in there. And, and gets a, a better flavor. If you close the vent, you're going to get more liquid accumulation and the sauce is going to be much lighter in flavor. So you can go either way. I like my sauce to be very flavorful. So that's pretty much it. When we come back, I will show you the finished version and you can see how, um, how I played it and what I do with it. All right. Woo! We back with the ninja. All right. So. The ninja's done cooking, and I'm going to show you what's in there in just a hot minute. But first, I want to set up the plate this. Like I said, it's usually on rice. We have that miracle rice I showed you earlier. And what I did was open it, rinse it, let it sit on the side here, and allowed it to drain for a little bit. Now, this is just something I like to do because I like to add a little extra flavor. This is definitely not a traditional thing, but the konjac rice is already soft. It's, it's almost like it's a cooked texture. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and add it to a skillet. Then I have some coconut oil and some butter in it. I had a runaway. 
It ran away. I don't want to go! No! Alright. So. Now I find too, once you drain and rinse and allow the uh, conject rice to dry up a little bit, it's more up to absorbing some flavor. It doesn't take long to do this, it's just a quick little thing. I kind of toast it up a little bit. And I'm not adding anything else other than the butter and the coconut oil. And what this does to me is it helps give it a more rice-like texture. The konjac noodles remind me a bit of uh, glass noodles, and the rice is no different. It's, it's kind of this little translucent stuff. So when I fry it up like this, to me it actually gets more like a rice kind of texture to it. Plus, who doesn't love things cooked in butter and coconut oil, huh? It's tasty. We'll link to the, to the link below to the uh, Miracle Rice so you can find it real easy. Alright, now we're going to plate this bad boy up. So, I'm going to put some rice. Now, Miracle Rice, Conjured Rice, is pure fiber. So, I would suggest not going hog wild with it because it is extremely filling. What I'm going to do to plate this up, I'm just going to make a little crater type situation in the center. And let's get into the pork adobo. All right, so let me pull a piece out to show you. It's very soft, it's very tender, it's, it's pull apart. Whoop, it ran away too. Nothing wants to be eaten today. So there it is, extremely tasty. I'll show you another piece right there. Very soft, very tender, but because I pre-seared it up a little bit, it held its shape. It didn't fall completely apart. So I'm going to go ahead and plate up a little bit of the adobo, allow some of the sauce to come through. So you can see how I do this. There's some other things that I do with this too. I'll make uh, with leftovers. This is great for leftovers. With leftovers, I will make some adobo fried rice like I had in Hawaii. There's a little diner in Honolulu that my buddy took me to, and it was just fantastic. And they had adobo fried rice, and it was phenomenal. All right, I got some of the ginger in here, so I'm going to pull some of that ginger out. Let's scoop a little bit in. All right, I'm going to top it off with some green onion. Just for a little color and a little fresh taste. And if you want spicy, because I didn't put spicy on there, and somebody behind camera is shaking their head and freaking out, but I also found this, and it's really tasty. It's called Wild Brine Probiotic Spicy Kimchi Sriracha. So I love kimchi with this. This is a really great way to go. Now, just to show you, that is some beautiful adobo right there to enjoy up. Tasty, tasty. And it was super simple, didn't have to babysit it because it was in one of these cool devices. And we'll see you on the next video.